Let us resume, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm honored to invite you all to the third technical session of the day, which is on the topic outcome-based education: measurements of outcomes. Now, I would like to invite Ms. Sandra George, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, to welcome the resource person of the session, ma'am. A warm good afternoon to all. Let me have the pleasure to introduce Dr. R. M. Murugappan, who is the Dean, Curriculum Development Associate Professor, Head of the Department of Zoology, Tiagaraj College, Madurai. He has organized a number of UGC-sponsored seminars and national workshops. He had been the principal investigator in many research projects, mainly Ministry of Earth Sciences, Ministry of Environment and Forests, UGC, and has many ongoing projects to his credit. He has received the Overseas Associateship Award for specialized training of young scientists in niche areas of biotechnology. He was also awarded the Young Scientist Fellowship Award from Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology and many others. He is a veteran in studies and updates himself in the current education scenario. I'm sure that his knowledge and expertise in national education policy 2020 will be an eye opener for many of us. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, to handle the session. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you, sir. Sir, it's not audible. Would you mind to switch on the mic? Wait a minute. Oh, is it audible now? Yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Yeah. Thank you, Sandra George. It is nice to be a part of the NAC sponsored national seminar on assessment and accreditation in the light of national education policy 2020. First of all, I'd like to thank the principal, Dr. Sunil Matthew of Devamada College of Kuravilanga, Kerala. And I also take this opportunity to share my pleasantries with Dr. Tony Thomas, just whom I know for the past fortnight while inviting me for this national seminar. Thank you, Dr. Tony, for inviting me. And at this juncture, I'm, it's my pleasure to share my knowledge on outcome-based education to which I am in contact, uh, which or just I've been in touch with this outcome-based education for the past three and a half years while implementing the same in our college. So thank you one and all. And it's nice to meet nearly 45 participants and to share my views on this one. So I'll share the window. Is it visible? Uh, can you make a slideshow, sir? Then it will yeah. be very Yeah. Oh. Is it visible or do you want me to make it as a slideshow, entire slideshow? Uh, that would be nice, sir. Okay. Oh. 
now it's okay isn't it yes yes so, wait a minute a few minutes please the screen is sharing is it visible yes yes so come to the outcome based education so generally the future will not be created with the curriculum what you have studied so that is the basis of outcome based education so still we are revolving around the syllabus or curriculum which has been framed a decade ago so according to john dewey if we teach today students as we have been teaching earlier days it seems to be we rob the rob them of tomorrow so that is a basic concept of introducing outcome based education so why what is the purpose of outcome based education and dear participants if you have any doubt you can raise at the time and if you are unable to if my audio is not clear you are free to share okay tony yes yes sir okay. yes the purpose of outcome based education so at present earlier the curriculum that is being offered in the indian institutions hardly keep in pace with that of the demand to put it like like a drop in the ocean still in computer science department programs we are offering programming languages like java when the expertise in the field of artificial intelligence robotics and our other or need of the hour so there is an urgent need to shift from the input based indicators to the outcome based one so earlier this outcome based education was introduced in the year 1989 that is especially in the washington accord the induction of it is an washington accord it has been it is an international accreditation agreement especially meant for undergraduate engineering degree programs this washington accord is meant for professional engineering degree programs and it has been introduced in the year 1989 by william spady and india become a permanent signatory status of this national board of accreditation by 13th june 20, 2014 so nearly after 25 years we become a part of this outcome based education and in our college we introduced nearly 2014 and it has been implemented in the indian universities and colleges by the year 2015 and we in our college we introduced outcome based education in the year 2017 2016 17 generally outcome based education is an educational theory where each part of the education system centers around goals so whatever we need we need the outcome generally we ask for what will be an outcome so that is a basic concept on introduction of this outcome based education so 
whatever the part once we introduce the part, uh, content the purpose of that content introduction of that content should be clear so there is a outcome based education so by the end of the educational experience whether it is under graduation or post graduation each student should have achieved the goal what we have set for example if a student enter enroll for microbiology because i belong to the microbiology field i'm talking about microbiology if a student enroll for microbiology or biotechnology there should be a, on enrolling to the course or the program the student should have achieved the goal whether he would have go for higher education or he, have go, he or she would have go for placement so that we have to set the goal before defining the syllabus and this obe system focuses on learning rather than teaching so what the students learn what the students achieve that is a basic concept of obe so in this obe the role of the faculty is not only teaching he should act as an instructor trainer facilitator and mentor so based on the outcomes targeted so this obe this approach so initial or 10 initially for the 10 slides i'll mention about what are the components of obe and what is an obe then i'll show what we have introduced in our curriculum in our programs how we introduced outcome based education in our curriculum and how we evaluated the outcome of the students so that will be the second part of this so the second part of my lecture so outcome based education entirely focuses on the competency of the students so no matter how long it take place because in our college just we started with obi i think it is 2019 i think so 2016 it has been introduced we introduced the obe in the year 2019 so initially we did something and we have change continuous as change we work on the obe continuously so that's why i have included this word no matter how long it takes and what is the approach is required and what assessment activities must do and the main thing is the success of the student is the only goal how will you define the success so success is determined based on the previously established criteria so obe is a top down approach from the top to the down approach and as i have already mentioned william stadi defined this approach and for each and every courses here what i mean about the courses in the sense a paper because if you know about the ugc based curriculum before prior to that of obe ugc mentioned the papers individual paper as a courses and the degree as a program bsc zoology is a program commerce bcom bachelor of commerce is a program bsc physics is a program so in that program we offer different types of courses different types of papers those papers are called as courses and the 
main thing of OBA is involvement of the stakeholders. So we have to involve all the stakeholders in order to determine, in order to evaluate the achievement of the students. So here, accountability measures. Each and every stakeholder should be involved in the framing of the syllabus. And in this OBE, variation in assessment. The advantage of OBE is assessment pattern variation is very, very minimal. And suppose the learning is precise with records which we can verify later. So, starting with a clear picture. So, not only just at present, in the traditional method, we never bother about the student after graduation. Generally, most of the students, the student complete the degree and goes away. But here, while framing the syllabus itself, we have to think in our, we should have in our mind, what would be the status of a student after few years of graduation, three to five years of graduation? What would be his status? So generally, as I already mentioned, it is learner-centric, learning rather than teaching. Once we said the outcome is not achieved, predefined outcome is not being achieved, we have to improve the system. So continuous improvement is inevitable. And it also provides. So, for example, I have seen uh, in today's, in your seminar, the NAC sponsored seminar, there is one session called as Academic Bank of Credits. That's what we are preparing now in our college. Academic Bank of Credits. Okay. So, we are preparing the graduates to fit themselves globally. Not only globally, nationally. That is one of the part of the national education program. Excuse me. And we, have to, we are preparing the curriculum. Effective and innovative delivery, delivery methods and we should have an effective assessment method. So for this OBE, the faculty involvement and enrichment, so they have to go for faculty development program in order to update, in order to keep in pace with that of the present scenario. The OBE addresses the following questions. I already mentioned what are the concepts and other things. And this OBE addresses the following questions. So, first one is the skill set. Skill set of the students. What we want, once we introduce a course or once we introduce a program, for example, the skill set should be defined. What we want the students to have or able to do on studying that course or on completing the program. So that is the first one. And how best this is mentorship. The second one is mentorship. How we can guide the students to achieve the goal. And evaluation. How we can know or presume
the student have achieved the goal set by us prior to that of while framing the syllabus. That is evaluation. And whether we close the loop or if there is any lack in it, whether that loop continues. So whether the loop is closed based on the evaluation, once the student or a student achieve the goal, the, the loop will be closed. Otherwise, where is the lacune? And we have to take steps to fill that lacune. So, for example, um, what are the benefits of OBA? It is clarity. For example, in the traditional syllabus framing, there is a set of courses for a set of, for a program. For example, for zoology, we have invertebrata, car data, biochemistry, biotechnology, uh, physiology, so on and so forth. There will be a set of courses. But here in OBE, we can refine a course. There should be clear clarity why we introduce the course, why we introduce the paper and flexibility that is choice based credit system the students are give flexibility so to choose they can choose the paper of their own for example in a college with the help of this, by introducing OBE, we have introduced vertical mobility. We have introduced two things. One is vertical mobility, another one is horizontal mobility. Horizontal mobility in the sense that is nothing but non-major elective. You may be aware of non-major elective. As science students, opt for arts paper. Arts students opt for a science paper. It is called as a non-major elective. And for example, vertical mobility in the sense we give an open curriculum. For example, in the core elective papers, in the core elective papers, we give a set of core elective papers so, the second year students as well as third year students, they may choose a particular paper of their interest. So, instead of defining a course for a particular year students, second year students, second year and third year students may sit along for one paper that is called as vertical mobility. So, this is what we have introduced now. But it is highly cubism, that vertical mobility. Just we have introduced only for only one paper in a semester. For example, in MSc Microbiology, we offer four papers. One is Herbal Technology, Computational Biology, and uh, Forensic Science, and two other papers. The first PG students as well as second PG students, they choose three papers out of this. One paper, they are given option to choose any one of the paper of this three. So there is a heterogeneous, heterogeneous population. For example, in forensic science class, both first year students and second year students will be present. Likewise, in herbal technology paper, both first year and second year will be present. So that is a flexibility. So coming to the benefits of OBE, there will be a clear clarity. First one is why we define the course, why we introduce that course. 
and second one is flexibility and third one is comparison comparison between the different courses that is mapping i'll talk about that later on mapping and finally involvement so involvement of the stakeholders coming to the drawbacks as i already mentioned generality the same set of courses are being provided for particular degree and assessment problems we never assess the outcome and there is no clear cut definition for example now we are working on obe but now there is another one locf within few years it has been introduced in 2014 but in 2019 ugc introduced learning outcome based curriculum for mok so it is nothing but a different framework a different approach for the same result so coming to the drawbacks of ob in the sense it's being updated regularly okay and another drawback is involvement if one of the stakeholder does not involve put forth himself in the development of ob there may be some sort of lack so this is regarding a brief introduction of obe coming to the comparison of existing pattern with that of obe dear participants any clarification hello yes sir any clarification no no sir you can proceed thank you so just you see now we have a vision and mission statement of a college of the entire college but in obe the first one is up in addition to vision and mission statement of the college of the institution there should be a vision and mission statement of the department once a vision is being achieved that vision can be for only for a particular time period if the vision is achieved then we have to up, uplift our vision so that is the one thing first one is the first criteria for the first step in obe is we have to define the vision and mission statement of each and every department the next one is program educational objective it is not in the case of a traditional method the next one is program outcome the next level is from high order to the lower order program specific outcome and then this the fourth one we have the course title whether it is core elective the number of hours semesters total marks course code but for obe as per the nag guidelines they ask for a program code they ask for a program code there should be a common program code there should be a particular program code for each and every program and this what we have defined we have a preamble for each and every courses and prerequisites for pg programs for the courses offered for pg programs we have prerequisites for example you can see all these things in our college website in our college website we have uploaded the syllabus for the past 3 years so while you go through the syllabus you can see how far we have changed modified updated our syllabus quite often so prerequisites prerequisites is meant only for pg programs and course outcome if a student study or if we offer a course there should be a set of outcomes 
So based on the outcome only, course outcome only, we frame the syllabus. Then we have to go for mapping. That is an important thing. Course outcome with program outcome and program specific outcome. And the second part, or eight minutes. This all in the part of the syllabus. Detailed syllabus. Generally, we have five units. Test books, reference books, as well as web links. Lecture schedule is inevitable for go for NAT accreditation process. The committee asks for lecture schedule, whether we follow a strict lecture schedule. And there should be a course designer for each and every course. One or two. The purpose of defining a course designer in the sense to provide the responsibility. And the next one is Bloom's taxonomy. Just now we are not following Bloom's taxonomy in our college. So Bloom's taxonomy meant for evaluation of knowledge level of the students. So don't confuse Bloom's taxonomy with that of OBE. So it is ASHI. Annual Statistics of Higher Education Report. Generally, we live on road learning. So, you know the stakeholders. So, this, the part of the stakeholders, whether it is employer, students, parent, government, because government, TANSI, Tamil Nadu State Council for Higher Education insists us to follow certain courses for a particular program and the society and we have our own thing educational institution all these things are the stakeholders so their contribution is inevitable for framing a syllabus so how OBE differs from that of traditional so the uh, in the earlier one, the same curriculum is passed from one academic year to the next academic year. And once they form, the staff members are more familiar with the syllabus. And they go for completion of the syllabus before the end of the semester. And generally, um, we Categorize the students as slow learners and advanced learners. And have it in your mind. The NAC asks for what are the steps you have taken for slow learners and advanced learners. And how you differentiate slow learners and advanced learners. So earlier, we assess the students based on their marks. That is not the criteria alone. Marks never define a student as a slow learner or a fast learner. Okay. How he assess. That is important. Okay. So these are the uh, drawbacks of traditional education. Whereas OBE, the curriculum is defined according to the need of the today's environment what the world need now. So there is an advantage. And teachers update themselves and help the students to develop new skills. And the assessment is done on different levels that's based on the outcome. We define an outcome and how it Based on the mapping, we define levels. So, once you want to introduce OBE, 
define the outcome first generally what we do in the sense we define we design a curriculum first but it is not the case of our obe once you want to define once you want to introduce obe you have to define the outcome first based on the outcome we have to design a curriculum once the curriculum has been designed we should determine the method of instruction how the curriculum as can be delivered to the students carry forward the students once the curriculum has been carry forward the students how they perform once based on the results okay examinations based on the performance we can determine where we are lacking determine the advancement so these are the five d's of outcome based education so the parameters the five parameters of outcome based education on graduate attributes first one is graduate attributes whether it is knowledge skill ethics communication uh, computer literacy so on so forth that forms the graduate attributes and the program educational objective what is the purpose of introducing that program bsc zoology for example or bsc microbiology what is the purpose objective and outcome of the program pos and outcome of the specific programs for example the graduate attributes in the sense students what we expect from the student knowledge and skills ethic they should aware of the ethics they should have a computer literacy lifelong learning all these things comes under graduate attributes so once you go for the nac manual at the last page of the nac nac manual they have mentioned about the graduate attributes and program outcomes for certain programs just nearly 12 to 13 program outcomes you can make use of that in your syllabus and program educational objective is for that program program educational objective and program specific outcome is meant for that particular program whether it is bsc econo b ba economics ba english or bsc chemistry whatever it may be so program educational objective and program specific outcome is meant for that particular program and course outcome it is for that particular course so the program evaluation is multi dimensional for example after the introduction of washington accord once you browse the earlier thing you can see they map course outcome with the top program educational ob objective the first priority what they give in the sense they map course outcomes with the tough program educational objective but now the course outcome is being mapped with program specific outcomes and program outcomes do so we have the evaluation of a program is multi dimensional in the sense course outcome is being mapped with program outcome course outcome is being mapped with program specific outcome so by that mapping we can evaluate the outcome of the student so it is multi dimensional so what are the steps we carry forward to convert the syllabus that we had into outcome 
based education. We define vision and mission statement. And then we identify objectives of each and every program. What we did in the sense, in this slide we have mentioned about four or five. It is better you restrict to the numbers because just this does not have a much role in the present scenario, program education objective. So we have only five. But it should be a part of the OBE because NAC asks for whether you have a program education objective or not. So we had only five program education objectives for each and every program. We fix on to that. And in our college, we aligned program outcome with that of the graduate attributes. So the program outcomes are aligned to that of the graduate attributes. So what we here, what the meaning of program in the sense? For example, program in the sense BSc is a program, BCom is a program, a common, and BA is a program, BBA is a program, and MA is a program, MCom is a program. MBA is a program, MSc is a program. So, a common, a BSc in the sense, BSc in the sense in which it should be common for BSc chemistry, BSc physics, BSc zoology, BSc botany, BSc computer science. So, all this comes under one roof, that is program outcome. So, program out, outcome we define a program outcome. For example, we defined six program outcomes for undergraduation. I'll show that. And seven program outcomes for PG courses. Likewise, we have defined. So, before introducing, you should have a repeated meeting to define each and every concept each and every parameter of OBE. Okay. So first, for defining a vision and mission statement of the department, there should be a repeated discussion. And once you define the vision and mission statement, you should write about nearly five program educational objective. I'll talk about what is program educational objective in the next slide. And in our college, we define program outcome to that of a graduate attributes. So this, we merge these two. And we have only six program outcomes for UG, seven program outcomes for PG. I have left one step. There is next one, program specific outcome. There should be a specific outcome for each and every programs. For example, in zoology, for zoology, one of the program outcome in the sense, the students on completion of the course, the student will be able to realize, interpret the importance of environment. Likewise, we define for a particular program, we define program specific outcomes. And the methods of teaching and assessment procedure and the convert the assessment into grades. So these are the steps what we carry out to convert the syllabus what we had earlier to an outcome based education. So generally in some of the colleges while I go through the vision and mission statement have seen there are different just the vision should be on a single sentence that's what I want to mean what we look for after five years what would be the department what is um, what would be the aim of our department 
objective of the department where will be where the department would be that is a vision so it is a futuristic statement what that the department would be achieve over a period of time whether 5 years or 10 years generally it is a single it should be a single sentence and mission it should not be a single sentence you can write it down by two to three methods so it is a statement actionable statement how we achieve the vision how we reach the vision that is a mission statement the approaches so the approach may be different approaches we may have different approaches to achieve the vision so that is the one so vision and mission statement so the department vision mission should lie fall in line with that of the institution so it falls in line close to that of the institution so the department vision and vision it will be initially framed by the faculty we have to have a draft copy of the vision and mission and it will be placed for discussion by the parents professional bodies alumni industry stakeholders once we collect the views it has to be placed before the board of studies and then we have to go for freezing finalize okay so this way we define the vision and mission statement once the vision and mission has been defined the next one is program educational objective as i have already mentioned it is five statement okay five points it is a broad statement so what is in the sense what would be the status of a students after four years of the graduation whether you go for a professional accomplishment or you go for um a career related to his field or you become an entrepreneur so in that way we have to define our program educational objective and the next one is it has to be defined based on the need of a stakeholders PEO should not be similar to that of PEOs. And if you have an advisory board for each and every department, you can sit along with the DAB to define mission and mission statement and program educational objective. as i have already mentioned first the hierarchy is program educational objective the second one is program outcome what we done is we align that with that of the graduate attributes so scientific knowledge problem solving we have an idea on environment and sustainability so uh, nac have given nearly 12 to 13 graduate attributes of which we have chosen based on the thing we have chosen nearly 7 and 6 so we would describe what the students are expected to know and able to do by the time of graduation so leadership quality everything comes under that one okay. 
whether it is program outcome or program educational objective it is a broad statement program specific outcome should be narrow so at the time of graduation or after graduation what the students would be what would be the status of a student what of their knowledge level that is determined by program specific outcome so we have a program specific outcome for bsc microbiology msc microbiology bsc zoology msc zoology so on so forth the lower level is lower end of from the top down approach i mentioned course outcomes you may have any number of course outcomes and you may have any number of program specific outcomes but while we sit in our college we fix it to the five okay otherwise if you increase the number of program specific outcome the mapping there there may be a lot of mapping then there may be some spaces empty spaces it should not does not shoot so in order to avoid that we fix the program specific outcome as five and course outcome as five and this is a measurable parameter like program outcome course outcome is also a measurable parameter and while writing the course outcome you should follow action verbs avoid the verb understand no like that type that, that kind of action verb should be avoided so the bottom most one is course outcome the next one is program specific outcome then program outcome then program educational outcome objective so program education objective 4 to 5 years after education graduation program outcome on graduation course outcome on the completion of the course the same slide in a different pattern so we align graduate attributes with that of program outcome that's what we, i want to mention and this is the mapping so generally the fulcrum of mapping is course outcome we map course outcome with that of program outcome and we map course outcome with that of program specific outcome now we avoid this one we leave this one for the just in the subsequent years since we are in the fourth year of introduction of ode we leave this program education object the mapping is important so this is our syllabus when we go for when we go to our website you can see the same thing program outcome aligned with graduate attributes so it is the program outcome meant for bachelor of science so this is common for bsc physics bsc chemistry bsc botany bsc computer science bsc information technology so we frame we define the word scientific knowledge and critical thinking it is pivo 1 so by the end of the program the student can able to apply the knowledge of life science once you see i have covered all the programs life science physical chemical sciences mathematics statistics computer science and humanities for the attainment of solution to the problems that come across in our day to day life so in this way just and i already mentioned there are six program outcomes for ug and 
make life long learning it is a part and they should have a problem solving capability on completion of the course so these are the program outcomes what you see in our college website for the program bachelor of science so once you go for this the first one you can see i have covered all the programs and the third one is meant for mathematics physics and computer science lifelong learning all and this one ethical social and professional understanding for all and entrepreneurial development so that we have covered so likewise just we took nearly one hour. it took nearly one hour for us to define the program outcome and other thing and this program outcome can be measured by using a pivo and co matrix we map co with pivo and the weightage is given based on the lecture hours for us so this is the first one is program outcome the next one is education objective after 5 years a student who did is under graduation in zoology they have a knowledge on taxonomy diversity relationship and evolution of animals we know human evolved from monkey so that thing we have introduced here what would be the status of a student he can apprehend and once we go for the pivo pivo four the students even after graduation they have a logical conclusion for biological and environmental problem and man animal dispute that comes under the third one so likewise i request you to take sufficient time to define pivots pivots and psv we have a long discussion repeat a discussion and healthy discussion and this is after 5 years program education objective program specific outcome at the completion of the course so here we have mentioned about each and every course so that way we covered and this what you can see in our college website so tiara jo college pre accredited with a plus plus and ara franki and for those joined msc zoology on or after 2020 and we have a program code nac asks for the program code that is an initial you have to upload for each and every program so while defining a program code since i belong to the life science i follow the genetic code pattern three letter word the first letter for pg the second letter for the major zoology is at was zoology if it is ug it is u is at was and if it is microbiology umo likewise we define a program code and a course code the name of the paper is genetic engineering and biotechnology which is being offered for the pg microbiology students and the code is pg zoology student sorry msc zoology student so we have introduced the pz mo year 20 c is meant for core the paper is core core paper and the third is third semester and it is
is a first paper. So that is a course code we define. So based on the code, course code, we can say this belongs to this program and it has been introduced in the year, this one, 2020. Likewise, we can define and it is in the semester and whether it is core or elective. If it is elective, it will come E here. And as per UGC, one lecture hour is equal to one credit. Lecture hour, this is tutorial. T for tutorial, P for practical. So once you see, the second year, third semester, the internal marks, external marks, total. Preamble. An introduction. And what are the requisites? I already mentioned prerequisite will be there only for PG students. And course outcome. This are the course outcome. My general request is don't define the course outcome to the unit. Generally, there are five units for a course paper. So don't define a course outcome for one unit. Make it as a common. So then only it will be easier. And coming to the next one, expected proficiency. So initially, what we have, what we did in the 2020, it will be like this. Once you go for 2019, there would be, we have mentioned about the knowledge level. As I have already mentioned, I don't want to confuse both assessment. So I want to assess only the outcome. So I fix on to OB alone, not on the bloom taxonomy. So you may have a question. What is expected proficiency? Expected proficiency is nothing but a marks. So if you ask a question on this course outcome one, if the question is on course outcome one in that class, nearly 70 marks will be taken by 60% of the students. So expected proficiency is a marks. And sorry, this one is expected proficiency. It is repeated. It is expected attainment. There is a mistake. It is expected attainment. It is expected proficiency, expected attainment, or proficiency attained. It will be like this. So, for this course outcome, I expect 60% of the student in that class will get 70 marks, will get more than 70 marks. That is my goal. So, based on that, I have framed the syllabus. So, for the course outcome 5, what I sell in the sense, nearly 50% of the student may get 60 marks, more than 60 marks for the question which revolves around CO5. So, this is the basic concept of framing. And this is mapping. We have given a weightage for each and every one. S means strong. M means medium. L means low. You may ask how we define that level, whether it is strong, medium or low. So based on the lecture hours, for example, if a course outcome one, course outcome one has 13 lectures, three zero lectures, course outcome one has 30 lectures. Of that 30, 20 or 10 lectures go for PSO one. 
and the remaining 10 goes for PSO2. Nearly 2 go for PSO3. Likewise, based on the lecture hours, based on the weightage, we define whether the mapping between CO1 and PSO1 is strong, medium or low. Strong means 3, medium means 2, L means 1. And this one is no mapping at all, it does not coincide. So, the weightage is given based on the lecture hours. So this is what I have mentioned. This is what I have gone for. In our syllabus. Yeah. Any clarification? Sorry. I'm talking. I'm talking for a long time. Sir, at the end, we will have a discussion. At the end of the session, we will have a discussion. Okay. Is the screen is visible? Yes, but not in uh, that uh, oh, okay. presentation. Now it's clear, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so generally, how the attainment of CVOs is being measured? There are two different methods. One is direct attainment. Another one is indirect attainment. Indirect attainment in the sense, it is clearly mentioned feedbacks. Because NAC asks for feedback. Whether you get the feedback from the students, from the parents, alumni, and the employer on curriculum. So that is an indirect assessment method. Okay. So we can assess the outcome of a student on two methods. One is indirect attainment. And the weightage has to be given for each one. So indirect is based on the course exit survey. Suppose if there is a course, for example, biochemistry in the first year or cell biology in the first year, on the completion of the course, the student has to give the feedback, exit survey. So that we have given. So in OBE, the feedback has its own weightage. And we have to define. For example, in our college, for this indirect attainment, we give nearly 10% weightage. And direct attainment, the second method and the major method, the direct attainment, we give nearly 90% weightage. And the direct attainment depends upon the internal test. You may have three internal tests or two internal tests. That one. And assignments. Quiz. And you may provide some tutorials, experimentals. And external exam. All this thing will come under the direct attainment. So the attainment of CVOs can be measured by direct and indirect method and the weightage you have to define so just now i am going for this is regarding the outcome based education and in the title you have mentioned about assessment but i am going for the assessment after this one uh, measurement of outcome the next the remaining slides will be measurement. 
uh, that is an important part the program of the study first one and what are the courses we have to introduce there may be 12 core courses once you go for ugc it defines nearly 12 to 13 core courses and they have mentioned about generic elective that is ancillary and in ugc there is a term called ability enhancement compulsory course and skill enhancement course so these are the courses so we have to introduce the courses that is needed for the program under different criteria so once it is a program of study we have to define the courses whether the course is a core one or a elective one or it is a generic elective or it is an ability enhancement compulsory course or it is a skill based course then the next one is for each and every courses we have to define the units the content units are nothing but the content okay and this is called as a how the weightage of the each courses c01 c02 c03 and we have to map the course outcome and based on the course outcome question has to be formed the course outcome has match mapped with other thing each question is linked to the course outcome and that one leads to the results if the results achieved whether the outcome is attained we can move on to the next assessment if it is not we have to change this one where it is lacking whether the students lack on quiz whether the students lack on assignment whether the student lack on project so that we have to modify so this loop as i have already mentioned in the sense whether we have to close the loop or we have to change the loop that is the one here so this is the measurement an important part the important part in the sense this is the just what have for us there are service providers in india there are lot of service providers blackboard so on so forth they once you give the result they will give the attainment once you frame all these things and you give the result they will provide the attainment but it is easier to measure the course outcome with the excel program once you once you have a computer science department you can get the help from the computer science professors to define a, to develop a program to measure the attainment okay it is simple and just i am talking about that one only here so this was a class in a class of nearly 60 students this is the registered number of a 60 student and we have measured the attainment of co1 one co co1 and that co1 there are either or question the co1 carries 15 marks co1 carries 15 marks so this is a one question this yellow shade is one question which have three part a b and c or either or question it should be on a either or pattern question pattern should be either or so if it is a question number 1 that question number 1 assigned for co1 and it have a neither or pattern and each question carries 15 marks so the students can attain either 1a this 3 or 2a to b so 3 5 15 or 7 plus 8 15 so for question number course outcome 1 15 marks and assignment you have given one assignment that assignment is on c1 that assignment carries 4 marks maximum so the total 
weightage of CO1 is 19. Likewise, you have to define CO1, 19. CO2, it may be 20. CO3, it may be 15, so on and so forth. There's no need, it should be of common. So, weightage should be given based on the lecture schedule, as I've already mentioned. So, once you go for the student number one, he have, he attend, he have attended only the second question, 2A and 2B, that is 15 marks. So, 7 plus 8 has got nearly 13. He left over this one. So, 13 assignment you got out of 1, 4, 4 out of 4. So, 13 plus 4, 17. So, the percentage of CO1 is 17 divided by 19 in 100. It is 89%. So, the first student, the percentage of attainment of CO1 is 89 so, we, that level, we have to define the level. If the percentage is more than 50 or 60, you can define this one initially. If it is more than 50, the attainment level is 3. If the percentage is less, between 30 and 50, it is 2. Less than 31. So, here, the first student got 89%, so he comes under the higher level. The second student got only 5 plus 3, 8 marks. So, 8 divided by 19, 42%. That comes under the second level. Likewise, you have to categorize each and every student. The attainment level of each and every student of CO1 should be categorized. So, the average one is 2.8. Likewise, you have to calculate for CO2, CO3, CO4, and CO5. Once the course outcome, this is one course of all the students in a class is defined. So, for example, in that class of 60 students, CO1 is 2.8. Okay. CO2 is 2.5. CO3 2.7. CO4 2.9. CO5 2.9. So, it is all these things between 30 to 50. So, now you have mapped earlier CO1 with the PO1. Here I mentioned. CO1 with PO1. This is Strong, medium, strong, three, medium, two, L, one. Okay? That's what I have given here. The map, what we have done earlier. CO1, map with that of PO1, two. CO1, map that of PO2, two, likewise. Now, we have measured the attainment of CO. Now we are going to measure the attainment of PO here. How to attain in this? How to measure the PO attainment in the sense? For CO1, it is 2.8. Okay, 2.8 is a CO attainment. So now we are going to measure the attainment of PO1. So, for CO1, in that class, the CO attainment is 2.8, but we expect only 2. So, 2.8 into 2. CO2, 2.5 into 2. Then, 2.7 into 2. 2.9 into 2. 2.9 into 1. Divided by... 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. That is, PO attainment is 2.73. CO attainment is 2.8. Here, PO attainment is, PO1 attainment is 2.73. Likewise, This is for PO2. 
itu so, once you go for PO2 likewise we have to go for this one 2.8 2.5 2.7 2.8 2.9 the same one here and here the same whereas here it differs because here it comes three likewise the PO attainment should also be derived once it is derived the course attainment can be calculated defined that is the loop just we have defined because already we have defined the direct attainment is here this example they have given us 80 and indirect 20 as I already mentioned I mentioned about 90 plus 10 in we are following in our college so based on the marks CO1 53.57 that is second level external average 62 so, average of this one, these two constitute the direct assessment. 53.57 mark average and for external examination 62 of our entire students. So, once the average, it will become 57.785. So, the level is 2 because it is less than 60. And indirect, based on the feedback, Feedback we can measure based on the level, high, low, average, like that, 70. So, indirect assessment, 3. So, coming to the attainment, 80% of the direct. 80% of the direct is 1.6. 20% of the indirect, that is 0 0.6. 1.6 plus 0 0.6 is equal to 2.2. The same thing here. Whereas here, 80% of 3 is 2.4. 20% of 3, 0 0.6. 2.4 plus 0 0.6, it is 3. Okay. Then, once you summarize this one, 10.4 divided by 4, it is 2.6. So, for a max paper, group theory, the course outcome attainment is 2.6. So, sorry, group theory, it is 2.6. So, likewise, we have to calculate for each and every courses offered for that program. The course code, target what we have fixed is 2. Attainment is 2.6. So it is fully attained. Real analysis 2 for the PAVE course 2.4. Whereas here, ordinary differential equation paper, we set a target as 3, but the attainment is 2.8. So we have not attained the target, so more focus should be given on end term examination. For this paper, the same thing happened. Here, the question paper may be tough. We have to sit and evaluate the question paper after the examination. And here, the syllabus is tough, so we have to set the target level to 2. So this target level for the attainment of course outcome should be defined based on the average marks that has been attained by the students in the previous academic year. So with this, the next five minutes, we can have a discussion. <laughs> Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, sir in tyagrajar college uh, uh, you have been implementing this since 2017 uh, right uh, no 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 we introduced implementing from 2019 19 okay, okay. so, so mm, uh, yeah yeah how do you feel how the students how the faculty and how the skill set of students evolved during this period of time oh, your reality in reality how all these things can you comment uh, on that uh just for example uh, just we take it took nearly one year to educate the student regarding the different components of obe first of all Uh, just we have to educate the students it took nearly one year okay then we have assessed only in the last year mostly oh, okay. assessment we are not go for this we get the help from uh, tata consultancy services there is a specific package we provide a specific package they charge for that and okay. use that package we assess the outcome what we feel in the sense in the due course of time because we cannot treat the fruit within a short period it may took nearly another 2 to 3 years to learn to know the outcome of this introduction of outcome based education but one thing i can tell the syllabus was very good we have developed a very good syllabus and we involve all the stakeholders in framing the syllabus so and another one we update the syllabus regularly thereby the what is the fruit of this outcome in the sense introduction of outcome in education in the sense we have increased the placement level that is a major thing what we have seen now there is nearly 10 to 12 percent increase in placement of the student in last year. Okay, okay. Sir. Did you offer any uh, uh, coaching to faculty training or coaching to faculty to do all this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, for example, we train the staff members of other college. Uh, apart from that. once you ask any of the staff member in our college they are way, they have a very clear idea about ob because we had a regular repeated meeting to make aware of the different components of ob because it is not we cannot we didn't turn it we didn't introduce within a day within overnight as i have already mentioned for example uh it took nearly 2 to 3 years for us for example what i have seen just i have shown is the sense uh, expected proficiency expected attainment all these things we introduced only in the last year last academic year so earlier we had a confusion whether to evaluate or measure the knowledge of the student based on the bloom's taxonomy then we dropped that one we measure only the course outcome So okay, each, okay sir thank you we had nearly uh, 20 meetings 20 to 25 meetings staff meeting to make aware of the different components of ob thank you thank you sir thank you and to the participants just i have shown my number i have given my email if you have any doubt and if you want to introduce obe in your institution you are free to ask me i am ready to share my expertise and if you have any just before that you can visit our college website tcrs.in tcrs.in there you can go for the curriculum syllabus we have uploaded the curriculum that we are being offered for the past 3 years so in that curriculum itself you can see a lot of difference is anyone from any autonomous institutions is any participant is from autonomous institutions yes sir okay 
Sarada College, Salem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have talked with your controller of examination earlier. I have talked with the oh, controller okay. of examination earlier. The thing is, and I been, uh, I did my uh, MPhil at Yagraja, sir. Which department? English department, sir. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Be an alumnus of a college. Yes, sir. The thing when, is, when uh, Padma um, Hari Haran. Yeah. So uh, and then uh, Raja going the Sami. Um, yeah, I know. So that. they were my teachers. <laughs> okay, the the former principal. You are talking about our former principal. Oh, very nice. Sir. The thing is, you may ask. For example, why do we map? Because I lo- I expect a lot of questions. You may ask. For example, why do we map? For example. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I'll show that slide. Is the slide is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much. Okay. The thing is, we map course outcome with that of PSO as well as PVO separately. Yes, sir. The purpose is there may be ancillary courses. There may be ancillary okay. courses. So, if it is an ancillary course, generic elective, it may differ. PSO it's not be suitable. The PSO is meant for only for B.Sc. Zoology. The okay, course sir, yes, is for chemistry. The course offered by the chemistry department, so it won't map. So for that only, there may be two or three mapping here. For example, in ancillary, we map that with the TOF PSO of the Zoology with that of the course, and that's why we go for PVO also. So once we introduce. You can see a lot of difficulties. Lakshmanan, I'm a PSO mapping. Yes. What are you doing? Answer it. What are you doing? Mapping. Answer it. 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 So for that you have to give us a model, sir. I oh, think we here we don't have a model for ancillary. Uh, no, no, no. Ancillary papers. For example, if take this as an ancillary paper. Uh, uh, for example, inorganic chemistry. Yes, sir. If it is inorganic chemistry, CO one is for the inorganic chemistry and program specific outcome. It is for only for BSc chemistry, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, it should yes. not be like that. It should be meant for B.Sc. Zoology, since the students of Zoology is going for chemistry. Oh. Likewise. Yes, sir. That is the thing you have to go for. Concentrate. There we leave. For example, initially we are unaware unaware of that one, because this is the course outcome for that particular course in organic chemistry. But the students belong to the program. Zoology, not chemistry. So we have to map zoology program specific outcome with that of these courses. Likewise, yes. we have to, so initially we feel all these difficulties. Then, thank you, thank you very much, sir. Welcome. I am free to ask any clarifications even after this pay time. Only any. Sir, uh, yeah. sir, I have a question. Uh, sir, uh, like in an affiliated system, uh, where the examinations, that is the final university examination, we can't have the uh, answer. Like uh, we can know, we can't know the uh, uh, points yeah. scored by the student in each uh, question. Uh, how can we map the course outcome? Or how can we obtain the course outcome? Just you are talking about the affiliated to university colleges, colleges which are being affiliated yeah. to universities. It has to be done by the university first of all, not by the institution, because you are following the syllabus provided by the university. So, but in, uh, in the NAC accreditation process, the uh, uh, one uh, thing is the measurement of attainment. Without knowing the uh, course outcomes exactly, how can we uh, produce the uh, attainment results? 
wait a minute, wait a minute, I just like that's why I'm suggesting for, for example, uh, of, uh, affiliated in the sense, there are a lot of, for example, you may provide, for example, it is, they ask for the thing, okay, you may, you can provide some courses apart from the courses offered by the university. For example, uh, add-on courses. Because, okay. Uh, the NAC asks for number of add-on courses, that is value-added courses offered by your institution. So, apart from the courses that is being offered by your university, you are free to provide some value-added courses that has its own weightage. So, in that, in that courses, you can introduce this or be a pattern. Because they ask for number of value added courses offered by the... Okay, so uh, there is no meaning in uh, uh, like uh, providing something uh, in the attainment of the usual programs because we don't have the data, certainly, right? Certainly. It, is to be, it has to be done by the university, not by the college. It has to be done by the university. No one can rise. Suppose but it may pull down the NAC score. So in order to reach or in order to cover up that thing, you can offer some value-added courses. It is also part of the NAC. So how many value-added courses you are offering? Or you can provide some diploma courses in addition to that. So in all that courses, so diploma is, can be considered as a program. And in that diploma, you can offer two or three courses. So that can be mapped and it can be included in your curriculum. Okay, sir. Thank you. Welcome. If there's no more questions, can we wind up? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful talk. Now I would like to invite Ms. Varsha Maria Babu, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, to thank the resource person. Ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone present in this virtual platform. For the last one hour, 30 minutes, we have been tuning into a revealing session on outcome-based education, a system focusing more on learning rather than teaching. I presume that the audience had a stupendous session on what we merely knew as a rudimentary piece of knowledge. The session, apart from giving an elementary understanding, could surely provide an insight on the importance of OBE. Hence, I deem it a privilege to propose gratitude to Dr. R. M. Murugappan, Dean, Curriculum Development, Yagaraj College, Madurai. Sir, listening to you was a great learning. Thank you so much for your time. On behalf of all the participants and their mother college, I express our sincere gratitude to you. And also, uh, I take this opportunity to thank all the audience, all the participants who have been the part and parcel of this technical session three in this NAC sponsored national webinar. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you Varsha, ma'am. Uh, uh, with this, we, we end, end the first, first day, day of, of our seminar here. here. I would I like to thank all the delegates, the participants once again. Hope to see you all tomorrow for the second day and the final session of the seminar. Thank you.